Praise the Lord. It's good to be in the house or online having church. And um, we're about to go into the praise and worship portion of the church service. And as we enter into this on Mother's Day, the word of the Lord tells us, make a joyful noise unto the Lord all the earth. Make a loud noise and rejoice and sing praises. It says, sing unto the Lord with the harp, with the harp and, and the voice of a song, with trumpets and sound of cornet. Make a joyful noise before the Lord, the King. Let the sea roar and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Let the floods clap their hands. Let the hills be joyful together before the Lord, for he cometh to judge the earth with righteousness shall he judge the world and the people with equity. And because the Lord will be judging the earth here soon, and because he is the great king, the creator of all things, he's worthy of all honors this morning, right? So let us lift up our hands and praise the name of the Lord. Heavenly Father, Lord, we, we thank, thank you, God, Lord, we thank for being so kind and so good to us. We thank you for this Mother's Day. We thank you, dear Lord, because you have created all things. And you are worthy of all honors, for they belong to you, dear God. We magnify you, O Lord. Have your way. Thank you for being our King. Amen. Let's give the Lord a round of applause. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your mercy and your grace, dear God. Hallelujah to your name. Amen. Yes, and below me, there's a there is an example of the link that's in the comments section where you can give. And remember, all Christians faithfully and consistently pay their tithe and gladly give in the offering as unto the Lord. And so we appreciate uh, those of you who have been faithfully, continuously giving and in everything. So let's keep that going with the vision in mind of a new church building so uh, and um so god is blessing and we want to keep that on on uh, on fire and also want to give a shout out to all the mothers out there i want to give a shout out to you and uh, we thank god for for each and every one and also a shout out to those who have uh whose moms have passed away Want to get gonna give a shout out to all those whose moms have passed away, and so and, and so we just want to kind of just just want to you know remember the mothers who have uh, greatly influenced our lives, right? And so and God is good and everything. So with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and pray over the offering. Let us pray over the offering, Heavenly Father. We thank you, dear Lord Jesus, for this time of giving. Father, we ask that you will bless both the gift and the giver. Uh, in Jesus' name, amen. So we appreciate your giving. We also give you shout outs. It's, and so um, I don't know how it is to lose a mom. Uh, my mother is alive. I want to give a shout out to my mother personally if she is going to watch this sometime online. So, amen. all right. So our God is awesome, right? Yes. Our God is awesome. And that being said, um, we're going to go ahead and get into the church worship service this morning. I want to give a special shout out to Sister Helen Beal over in Houston, Texas. I guess you, I would assume she stays in Houston. I want to say, I want to give you a shout out and uh, just, just to say hello, just to say hello to you. I had you on my mind and all that. Just want to say howdy and, um, and may God bless you. So let's get this thing rolling. We're going to come out of the book of Proverbs this Mother's Day morning. The book of Proverbs, chapter 31, verse 10. The book of Proverbs, chapter 31 and verse 10. And so let's hit this, y'all. It says, who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. Let's read that again. It says, who can find a virtuous woman, right? For her price is far above rubies. Mm, that's some powerful stuff, right? And we want to preach on a message entitled, The Proverbs Mom. The Proverbs Mom. 
let us pray. I would like to ask Sister Davis, ma'am, if you don't mind asking God's blessing on this church worship service. Lord, we thank you, God, for this morning, Lord. We thank you, God, for all that is listening. Father, I pray that you would give us ears to hear and hearts ready to receive what you have for us this Sunday morning on this Mother's Day. Father, I pray also that you would make preaching easy for the man of God. Lord, direct his, his words, his mind, his thoughts. Lord, I pray that you would give him a fresh unction from your throne room, Lord. And Father, let your presence be felt in any place where people are listening, God. Father, join us, we pray, in this service. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And to the men listening to this church worship service, I want to let you know that we can get, we can glean a lot out of this. We can all glean a lot out of this because this Proverbs mom is, is an example to what everyone should be like. All right? So, so she is an example to what everyone should be like, the mindset that we should all have that will cause us uh, all to be personally blessed, right? We'll first part partake of the fruits of our labor. We'll be the ones that first benefit from it. And not only that, people around us will benefit from this. So the Proverbs mom is a blessing to all. And so um, we're coming out of what God honors this morning. What God is looking for in the lives of people, right? And so, so we want to talk about the Proverbs mom from what God is looking for in the life of his people, coming from an example of a mom, right? And so therefore, because God is looking for this, the Lord has allowed me a male, a pastor male, to be able to preach this. Because sometimes, a lot of times, people go, well, you are a man and this, that, and the other. But it has nothing to do with me being a man. It's all about God delivering a message to the hearts of the listeners, right? Which includes myself, though I am speaking. And so that being said, that the Lord is not going to waste your time this morning. Whether you're a man, a woman, a mom, or not, God will not waste your time because your time is valuable. You have made the time to be here this morning. And so therefore, God is going to show up in this message because of who he is. Because he is good. He is light. He's not shady. He has character. He's steadfast. And he is concerned about us all right and so it has really nothing to do with me all i am is a willing vessel to bring forth that uh, message which god uh, has laid on my heart that's it all right so let's do this y'all the proverb the proverbs mom or the mindset of the proverbs mom hearing the word God places value on a lady that is virtuous, saying that her value, her price is far above the most precious thing uh, that man deems valuable. And obviously at this time, rubies were that which man chose at this time to be very, very valuable, very high dollar. Uh, no doubt only the the very wealthy could obtain rubies and right here god says who can find a virtuous woman through uh through this man who's given this given this prophecy who can find a virtuous woman that word virtuous mean a, a woman who who has a power uh who has a high she's high in uh in, in morality Okay, this woman who is powerful in virtues. So, therefore, uh, God is saying, who can find this woman? These type of women are very rare this morning. This just not just, uh, a lot of people don't have this thing going for them in their life. 
going for them that's moving uh, uh, in their heart, right? Uh, people have mindsets that are opposite of this, and but God is trying to give us a direction that will be a blessing to us this morning, that will be a help to our families, yes. that will be a help to our communities and everything. And so let's look at this. So as the scripture unfolds from Proverbs 31, verse 10 down, speaking of the Proverbs, Mom, the Bible begins to, to um, give us certain characteristics about this lady, right? As we go into it, the Bible says that her, her uh, it says in verse 11, the heart of her husband doth safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. Right here is the setup. This is the backdrop of, of, uh, of a picture that's being painted about this woman, this mom, who is virtuous. And it's going to tell us the why of verse 11 as we go down. It says, uh, she, uh, he safely trusts in her. He has confidence in her that she's not going to run around on him right and that she is going to make sure that the house is taken care of right it does not matter if you're married or not but uh, a person you know that a person is faithful when they take care of their own house the Bible tells us if uh, if we cannot be trusted in the small things how in the world are we going to be entrusted with the big things, brothers and yes. sisters, Amen. the small things count, yes. right? The small things are very important. Matter of fact, in a lot of ways, they are more important than the big stuff, the small things, right? Because if we can get the small things right, then the big stuff will be taken care of. And if the big stuff will be uh, taken care of because we're taking care of the small things, that means that the small things are of greater importance. Amen. The small things are of greater importance, right? And this mom was a woman that her husband safely trusted her. He felt safe trusting her. He knew that she would, she would produce. She knew that she would do whatever it takes to be in his corner, right? She knew that she would take care of that house to where there would be no need or that that house would not lack. It would not lack for food. It would not lack for clothing. Every need of that house will be there because of the mindset, because of the perspective of this mom, the way that she sees things, the way that she functions would make sure that that house is taken care of. And somebody say thumbs up out there, yeah. right? And that's the type of a person that has joy and peace on the inside. The result of a person that has that type of a mindset is self-joy, yeah. self-contentment self-worth. It causes the person to carry themselves in an upstanding way because the way that they function on up here makes sure that home is taken care of both physically and psychologically because of the fact that that is the way that they have trained themselves to function. And brothers and sisters, this morning, God is trying to train his people to function this way yes. by the example of this mom, right? right. And sometimes uh, training is like combing the hair. Uh, the hair could be going one way, it could be going all kind of wild ways, really. But you got to take the brush and brush it in the direction that you need it to go. And as you continuously brush the hair, pretty soon, pretty soon, uh, you won't have hair running all wild. It will be trained to, to go the direction of the brush. And God is the brush this morning. He is the one trying to, to get us to function a certain way because he knows that it will bring self-worth and self-value to you first. 
And because when you this way, when you are this way, you'll begin to, to take care of things that are around you, right? Okay, so um, therefore, as we journey on, uh, the Bible uh, telling her, telling us that, uh, that she's not going to let her house lack like many do. She's going to make sure that everything is taken care of and the husband does not have to stress over it. You know, I was thinking about my grandmother in honor to my grandma, sis. She was the type of a lady that surprised her husband. There were times that the bills needed to be due and he did not know how in the world it was going to happen. But all of a sudden she got this stash of cash somewhere going, hey, if we need a new washer or we need a new dryer or we need a bills paid, I got some money right here. And he's looking like, wow, how did you do it? How did she do it? She was resourceful. She went out, she would cut hair. She would, she would cook hot dogs on, on the porch and everything. She would sell clothes. She would make a way and the house was taken care of. They were not just getting flooded with debt. Right. But because of the, of the fact that she would help make a way for the house. Right. And this is kind of the way that this or really this is the way this Proverbs mom was back in these during these uh, times. And the Bible is going to express it. So as we read in the scripture, the word of the Lord says um, uh, after the backdrop, it said uh, her heart. Again, in verse 11, the heart of her husband does safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. Verse 12 says she will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. This is why his heart, this is part of why his heart safely trusts in her. She will not do him evil, right? She will not do him evil, but good. You know why? Because she is good in heart. It's not because she was just born that way. It's not because uh, uh, she already knew how to take care of hers. It, it is because, again, that she chose and she saw the value in doing people good and not evil. Yeah. Not only her husband, but also her children and people all around. And it's going to talk about people later on in the scripture uh, all around her, even in the community, y'all. Yes. She's not going around doing people evil because evil is not in her. How is that? Because of the God that this lady, no doubt, walked with. Yes. The virtue comes from a focused attention on God. And that's what men and women miss in uh, this morning because of the fact that they don't see the value in walking with God. There is value in walking with God yes. and it will bring you personally an uplift, yes. right? I'm talking about an outstanding good attitude towards God that brings forth a result that will bless people around. And when you bless people around you, then you cannot help but to reap blessings. You can't even stop the blessings from coming to you when you're the type of person and I'm the type of person that that seeks to do good instead of instead of evil. As the word of the Lord said, she will do her husband good yes. all the days of his life and the house is blessed. And it does not matter what kind of man he is. But what it what mattered the most was uh, the type of woman she was. Yes. Wow. You know, he it didn't matter what type of person she was not going to do that man evil. And because of not doing evil does not begat evil. All right. Good changes evil. Yes. Especially in a husband or yes. in a wife. This thing can work either way. Right. Yes. Because people are one by people's chaste conversation yes. in God. Amen. If you want your husband one, you need to act like the Proverbs mom. If you want your wife one, you need to act like the Proverbs mom. Right. 
Because it's not because of gender tonight or this morning. It's because of attitude. Amen. Right. Amen. And so, therefore, uh, this Proverbs mom's life can be a blessing to your family if you would, for once in your life, believe the word of God instead of being wrapped up in somebody else's uh, way of treating you. Good begets good. Amen. Evil cannot beget, beget good. If you do someone evil, you're going to stir up strife, of which I believe the Bible says that there's present every evil work. Yes. What's present in your house this morning? Every evil work? Dis everything is in disarray? Take a look at yourself. Take a look at yourself. And you got to be humble. You got to fall on the rock, Christ Jesus. You fall on the rock. You got to be broken. You got to let the pride break. Okay, what am I doing to worsen the situation? Yes. And what can I do to fix it? And that takes a lot of patience. A lot of patience and a lot of strength, right? To fix something that, that a lot of us think is unfixable in our homes. Because we, we built that in our hearts. A lot of times when we build things in our heart, we think that we cannot fix what we deem unfixable. You know, but you can fix something. There's sometimes a barber will mess up a haircut. But then you got, you got a, or a student barber will mess up a haircut. But then here comes the master barber. The student barber is looking at it like, uh, this haircut, I messed it up so bad, I can't fix it. And the master barber is looking, going, that haircut can be fixed. Amen. And then he comes over and he fixes that haircut and you can't even, and it looks so outstanding. And the student is looking at this professional with his mouth wide open. I didn't know that could happen. Because he's just a student. He's not being a professional. He's not being, as Reverend Olson said, a Holy Ghost professional. We need Holy Ghost professionals. Amen. Amen. That can see a problem and not become a victim to it and say, this can be fixed if I fix it with God's guidance. Amen. But there's a lot of people who yes. just, it's hard to get through this thinking, thinking. Because they say it can't be fixed. Not the Proverbs, mom. The Bible says she is doing good. She seeketh or goes after wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchants. The merchant ship bringeth her food. She bringeth her food from afar. She's like the merchant ships. In other words, uh, this lady is resourceful. Yes. She seeks the resources necessary for her family. No matter how far it is, I will go and get it for my people. Amen. I will go and get that which we need for this house, no matter how far it is, Amen. because I'm on the lookout. Amen. I'm on the lookout and I like living this way. And so, and she can't be lazy. And the Bible is going to talk about that. She will not slack in her business, no matter what it is. Amen. I'm talking about the Proverbs, mom, brother and sister. This is Happy Mother's Day, right? How many of us had mothers like that? Oh, some of us go, oh, some of us may say yes. How many of us are like that? All right. Amen. She didn't make an excuse. She didn't say we don't have. She said, I'm going to go out and find I'm going to go out and seek for it and look for it. And the thing is, is when people look for stuff and seek after stuff, they find serendip. Right? They find serendip. What is serendip? They find the, that, that blessing. They find the opportunity. They actually get the blessing. We call it luck. But you're not going to find, find serendip serendipity if you don't ever look for it and, and, and there's laziness about us right you go looking for it you'll find it whatever it is 
whether it's good or evil. That's the law. If you look for evil, you will find evil. Yes. If you look for good, you'll find good. Amen. We're all under those laws. If we look for Jesus with earnest and we and we want to be a part of something real, we'll find it. Yes. We'll find Jesus. We'll find the presence of God. We'll find the rock if we dig deep enough into the earth. <laughs> what are you talking about? We dig deep enough into our hearts, into our hearts and our soul. We'll find Jesus. Because digging deep means that there is some sort of desperateness to find him. Amen. Some people are not desperate enough to find the Lord. They're not desperate enough to find the needs of the house, to meet the needs of the house. They don't have an obsession to find what they need. And they will, and no one, none of us can find without looking. And you see opportunity in the smallest minute, minute thing. And you go, how did they find that? I, 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 uh, my grandfather, one time, he told me about a man. And now, he wasn't, he wasn't a man. He was a boy. And I think my grandfather, they were probably around 12 or 13. He said he had a friend. And, and he said his friend, when, when he was a boy, I'm sorry. Let me get my thoughts together. When he was a boy. He said he would always read. He would read all the time. What are you talking about? They'll be walking up the street. He'll see a piece of paper laying on the ground. He'll pick it up and read it. A bubblegum wrap. He'll pick it up and read it. He read, he read um, trash. Trash in the streets. He'll pick it up and read it. He'll, it doesn't matter. And guess what happened, brothers and sisters? Wisdom walks up and down the street. Check it out. He knew and learned a lot from that because he was seeking. Amen. He, he knew yes. so much stuff, learned so much stuff by reading stuff that people threw out. Mm. And he got very wise, obviously. Amen. And the man was smart because he was a seeker. Yes. And brothers and sisters, this woman's house was blessed because it did not matter how far she had to go to get it. She went and got it and her house always was clo had clothes, food. They were always blessed because she did them good. Amen. The Bible says in verse 15, she rises also while it is yet night. <laughs> she rises also while it is yet night. You know, the Bible tells us to love not sleep and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maidens, meaning her, uh, her servants. She would rise up and make sure that food was prepared. She made sure everyone was taken care of. Nowhere near laziness. Yes. We got to get far away from that sleepy mode. Some of us love sleep so much that it's destroying our finances. You sleep too much. If you quit sleeping all the time and make yourself productive like this lady, maybe you'll have some money in the bank. But you, but a lot of times people sleep for hours and they lose thousands and th millions of dollars from sleep and TV. And they, and they, and they, and, and, and they're not climbing and they depend on the government and they sleep a lot. Sleep too much. Too much sleep will kill you spiritually. And financially, hey, I have a saying of mine of this, do it now. A lot of times, brothers and sisters, I'm going to help us out here. This woman to me, to me, worked harder on herself. She was a virtuous woman. She worked harder on herself than she did working for someone else or working or doing for other people. She was working on herself. She did not love sleep. That's self-work. And one man said, if we will work harder on ourselves than we do on the job. Right. <laughs> you know, some people work harder on the job than they do on themselves, and they wonder why. 
We work harder on the job than we do on our spirituality. We work harder on the job than we do on our heart. And when you work harder on the job, all you're going to get is the wages of the job. All right. That's it. Mm -hmm. And they may not even give you a raise, but you can give yourself a raise. Yes. I'm trying to help somebody here. If you work on yourself, you can make yourself and you can you can. And I'm not trying to make this a prosperity thing, but listen, I'm preaching to my church. I don't know what other people do in their church, but I'm here to tell you, you can literally make yourself into a millionaire. Yes. If you work hard on yourself instead of settling for $15 an hour. Amen. Amen. You can have a walk with God along with it. If you will work on yourself instead of being dependent on the government. This woman was virtuous. Word says, she considereth a field and buyeth it. Verse 16, with the fruit of her hand, she planted a vineyard. She considereth, she get to looking at that thing because she's already resourceful. She's already like the merchant ship. She's already, it's already moving in her already. So what does it do? What does it do? This type of a woman's, her discernment of things is heightened. She can see and judge whether or not this will be profitable or unprofitable. That takes exercise. That takes exercise. That takes time. And over time, because she was not lazy, because she took care of her house, she can look at a field and go, that works for us. <laughs> so therefore, I'm going to buy that field and I'm going to make that thing valuable. I'm going to get return off of what I buy. And I'm going to be able to provide my house. And I'm going to be able to sell some of the products in the marketplace. That's going to bring income into my household. What a mom. And the kids are watching. And God is watching. And her husband is watching. And the people in the community know her. And knows, knows who she's married to. And they are blessed. Amen. That's a mom right there. That's a mom we all can learn from, right? Amen. Right? The Bible says, she girdeth her loins with strength and strengtheneth her arms. I went question mark. I went question mark on this, but as I read in the word of the Lord, God dealt with my heart. That's a scripture over in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13. It says, I'm going to take a portion out there, out of it. It says, wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Ah, this alludes to the custom of that day, how they wore loose clothes. That's what they used to wear. They used to wear loose clothes, right? They wore robes. They wore long flowing clothing. Listen, when it's time to do business, run or fight they would bind up or wrap their long flowing clothes or robes close to them being prepared for work. They are prepared to run. If there's a battle, they gird up themselves and they're prepared for fight. So what this is talking about here, the loins of her mind is constantly gird up to do her business for her God her family, and wherever there was a need in her immediate community, which equates to strength in her arms or power to, uh, to, uh, to do whatsoever she puts her hands to because her mind is girded up. That's why we read the scripture. It says she girded, up, girded her loins with strength and, and strengtheneth her arms. Because she's girded up up here. She's prepared to do business. She doesn't run loose. She doesn't hang loose, but she's sober-minded. She's focused. And when it's time to get busy, when she put her hand on it, uh, there's power there. Yeah. It's going to prosper. It's going to be blessed. Not that she can curl a lot of weights with her arms, but her product. Her productivity is done with heartfelt power. And, and she's very meticulous. She's, 
she has it done correctly because of her mindset. It's time to get down. Amen. Right. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. She won't. She makes sure that her merchandise, her her production is good. She layeth her hands to the spindle and her hands hold the distaff. In other words, obviously this lady was so, she was constant. She not only had a farm, not only did she plant, but she also sold. What do you do? What do you know how to do? Right. What are you specializing in? What, what talent do you have? Do you know how to do anything? God needs people who knows how to do stuff. God does not want us sitting around not knowing how to do anything. Learn a language. Learn something. Don't stop learning because, because when you're not learning and studying something, you're not stretching. You're just existing. This woman was, I mean, she had all kind of things going consistently in her life. Why? Because I have to provide for my family. Why? Because I need to be a blessing to my community. And I cannot be a blessing not knowing how to do anything. All right. And so the Bible says she stretches out her hand to the poor. Yea, she reaches for the hands to the needy. This lady is a giver. Listen, y'all, I'm going to deal with this tonight. She knows the art of giving. She will bless people because of the fact that because of her mindset and her heart set, the way that she thinks she is able to amass because she's resourceful and she has discernment because she has she does good to her husband and to her house. She has a lot. And so therefore she can give. She's in the position to give. She's not the poor. She's not the poor wanting somebody to give to her. She's the giver because of her mindset. Says she's not afraid of the snow of her household. Back then, there were some people who were afraid of the snow. They were afraid of the winter. How are we going to make it? How are we going to do this? And how are we going to do that? But this mom right here, she was prepared for the snow. It didn't cause her to be afraid. Matter of fact, she probably enjoyed the snow because in my house, everybody's going to have clothes. It's going to be warm. We have food. We are blessed because I went to work and I love my people and I love my God and I love my husband and my children. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Did I say that right? right? Tapestry. tapestry. Her clothing is silk. Silk is expensive and purple. Only wealthy people had that. Why was this woman wealthy? Because she just had it good. No, because she created that in her heart. She was able, she's able to have purple. <laughs> Poor people couldn't have purple back then. Only royal people could wear purple. See, if I'm if I if I understand history correctly, a poor a peasant, a poor person couldn't wear purple clothes. Because of the fact that they would be deemed a hypocrite, they'd probably be nigh to getting stoned. But this lady could. You know why? Because of the fact that she was she was a woman who was blessed. Let's keep going. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. <laughs> He's known in the gate. Why? Because she doesn't bring shame to him. And if anything, uh, she really kind of brings blessing to him and and he's lifted up by her life. Man, whoever's married to her, wow. And he's known in the gates. He has no shame. He sits among the others. She maketh fine linen and selleth it and delivereth girdles unto the merchants. She selleth these, this stuff. She's making money. Strength and honor are her clothing. In other words, spiritually, she is clothed with strength and honor, her mindset. That's what it's talking about. And she shall rejoice. She shall not be sad. Shall rejoice in time to come. She's not running around sad. Lazy people are the saddest and depressest people. They're the most depressed. Uh, she openeth her mouth with wisdom. And in her tongue is the law of kindness. Why? 
not because of the things that she reads, the things that she hears, and with the reading of those things and the hearing of those things, she live it. And it's a part of her. I'm trying to get people to allow the word of God to be a part of them, this service to be a part of them so that it can go against or help them uh, combat these old funky thoughts that destroy their lives. I know the power. I understand the power of now. I really know the power of mental assets. Mm -hmm. I understand that. And that's the reason why brothers and sisters, this church in Macon is, is, is on a journey. Amen. I understand that. And I want you to understand that no mental assets means hurt and pain. And, and sorriness and, and, and confusion and, and, and weirdness. But when we have these mental assets and we take hold of them going, God, and acknowledge this knowledge is worth, if you can't put a price on it and I'm going to live this, <laughs> guess what? Your life will change starting today. Today. Amen. Everything about you will be on the rise today. Amen. Today, your bank account will be on the rise starting today. Your spirituality will be on the rise starting today. Yes. Today, your your you'll be on the rise in your walk with God and your love for God. Your you'll be you'll start pulling yourself out of those depressions that you've had so, for so many years. Yes. Ah. Her children will rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, uh, and her husband also, and he praises her in verse 28. Verse 29 says, many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. This was a God-fearing woman. Amen. That's where she got it from, y'all. She got it from God. She got it from God. Yes. Why? Because she read what God wanted her to read. Yes. She listened to what God wanted her to listen to. Instead of listening to garbage and, and filthiness that don't prosper on anything. All it does is nothing. Yes. It says, give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works Praise her in the gates. Let the way she lived praise her right there in the community. It says, let her be blessed from the fruits of her hand. Let her have the blessings of God. And I want to say with that, brothers and sisters, we live this. We walk this. This is an example of a mom, y'all. This is an example of a mom. Mental assets, brothers and sisters, means everything. I mean, my Lord, I, I don't know how to express this. Would you please come to Jesus and change this thing for yourself? Yes. Let, let yourself be saved. Let yourself live the Proverbs mom scripture. Change it today. It's change starts in the heart. Change starts with the blood of Jesus. Change starts with the walk with God, y'all. Change it today. Quit running around here depending on the government and making this uh, America socialism. This lady not one time was, was dependent on the government. Forget the government, y'all. This country was not built on the government. This country was built on independence from, from, uh, from the government uh, of that day in, uh, coming from England and all. It, it, uh, they, they wanted freedom. And some of y'all need to read the Declaration of Independence, how it came about. And it give you a different perspective. Yes. This woman wasn't looking for the government. Yes. Right. She wasn't looking for the government. She took the risk. She wasn't looking to the priesthood. She wasn't looking to all that. She said, I am going to take the responsibility for my house. And she was so responsible, brothers and sisters, to where she was a giver to the poor. And let me tell you something, giving to the poor, y'all, 
blessing those who who don't understand their way who lack wisdom when they gain wisdom when they get out of the simple mindedness and they gain wisdom guess what that poor man who rises up will bless you back and no doubt this lady this mom passed away with on with honors no doubt when she passed away there were a bunch of camels and, and there was sadness and mourning in this in the city because of this proverbs mom who was so great to where God wrote her down God had her written down so we can learn from this mother you can learn from this mother y'all well I'm a bad mom pastor you making me feel bad it's not about making people feel bad it's about making people change yes I want you to feel bad enough I want you to feel terrible enough to where if you're feeling that way, I wish it was a little bit worse on the feeling. To the point where we change. Yes. Amen. To the point where we change. Sometimes bad has to happen to us as humans. I don't know why. To get us to move. We need a, we need a wheel wagon thrown in our path. We need someone to put a monkey wrench in our engine and, and, and so, the, so everything can mess up. So that it can be fixed. Some of us need to feel bad. Yes, to change. And get it right. Amen. And, and, have, and be an example of this virtuous mom. Read the Proverbs mom every day. Read it every day. And when you read it, tell yourself, this can be me. Amen. This can be me. Tell yourself, this can be me. You have to read it every day before you start your day, before you even get into to depthness in your Bible reading and everything, or even in your prayer. Read this every day. Give yourself a 30-day challenge. Read Proverbs chapter 31, verse 10 down every day until it becomes a part of you, until you begin to pattern yourself like this. Because when you pattern yourself like this, you will never lose out with God. You'll never be wrong with man. You'll be on your way to heaven and, and, and you will be so happy, yes. so happy and so at peace. And what is life if a man can't be happy or a woman can't be happy or a woman can't be alive and happy? Every day, every day should be a, a lively day. Every day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you should wake up and be alive. Your life should never be a drag or a drudgery. Never. That is not the will of God. And I know some of you sitting out there, oh, pastor, you tripping. Well, how come my life ain't that like that? It used to be like that. It used to be like that even in the ministry, even as a pastor. I had some draggy days and drudgery, days of drudgery all the way up uh, through the 30s, uh, even up in the 40s. But I said, forget that. No, nah, not the second half. Call it midlife crisis all you want. But I'm enjoying this midlife crisis. I'm loving it tough with a uh on it. And I'm trying to help someone. I am really am because I know what it's like. I know what it's like. I remember the time I'm about to get out of here. I walked up them stairs. My wife thought I was about to die. And my face was sad. And I was looking down to the ground. But, you know, I'm going to I'm going to do what I got to do now. I, I'm not going to let myself go there. But I was dragging. When I say go there to the point where man forget it, I'm leaving. I'm not. I'm not like that. But I said to myself, I said I gotta do something. Amen. I gotta do something, and I began to seek for understanding and wisdom on how to 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 um, function differently from what I have been, because. I said, I am not, I'm not going to live like this no more. I'm not going to walk. Not that I was living in ungodliness or sin, no. But I do know this. I know what it's not to be. I know what it is to be, ha to be sad and depressed and dragging. But see, at that time, see, God had brought me to this understanding. You need to learn the importance of, of, of mental assets. And you need to look at the word of God a little bit differently than what you have been. And call and allow it to be something that will develop you. 
There you go. Game changer. Guess what? I'm out of here. And I'll talk more about it. We got a men's fellowship coming up. Um, coming up. Uh, crying next Saturday. May 15th. And it is important for every male to be there. If you want to go up higher, it is important for every male listening to me to be there. Be there. I mean, what do you want out of life? You want to you wanna hang around with the chickens or do you want to run with the eagles? Because this is an eagle meeting. This ain't no punctified stuff, right? This is, this is let's go higher meeting. Dece uh, um, May, 15th. May 15th at the Cracker Barrel at 7 on Riverside Drive. Let's be there. 7 in the morning. 7 in the morning. There we go. Let us pray for a moment. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you, dear Lord Jesus, for your mercy and your grace. Dear Lord Jesus, continue to touch the hearts of the souls of men and women on this Mother's Day. And dear God, allow all of us to take heed to your word. And for God, you're not wasting time. But Lord, you're trying to help people to redeem or save or purchase their time through valuable learning and understanding that will help them not run around in circles throughout life. And Father, touch the hearts and God allow them to say prayers unto you. And if you don't know the Lord, pray out to me, Heavenly Father, I am ready for salvation. I receive Jesus and all of his words into my life. I believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And from this day forward, I will live for you. And I will grow in you. And I will listen to the things you will have me to listen to. And read the things that you will have me to read. And walk the way that you will have me to walk. And I will be influenced. I will allow your spirit to influence me all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, may God bless you real good. It's been real. God bless.